Hey YouTube, Bateman back here again. Um, so I do have a new home theater update video that I'd like to share with everybody. Um, I have moved over the last couple months, and so I'm at a new place, and so I do have a new theater. I was still able to turn one of the bedrooms into a theater, so I wanted to show you what I've been doing. And so I'll just pan around the room real quick. And then we'll go into a little bit more detail with what's going on in here. All right, so this is a place that I rent. I don't own this place. I'm on the bottom floor and there's only two other people that live above me. It's not an actual apartment complex or anything like that. And the guys who live upstairs, they're, they're pretty cool. So I can't, you know, I haven't been blaring the system, but I do get to enjoy it. So I'm ecstatic about that. Now I'll start with the paint color. The room was painted white, uh, but the landlord said they don't care. I can paint it whatever I want, as long as I paint it back to what it was when and if I move out. So I went with the same paint color I had in my other uh, last theater. So this is the Home Depot bare paint. The paint color is called Asphalt Gray. And this is the matte sheen. Go with the least reflective sheen that you can and the darkest paint that you're comfortable with. Black isn't really my color. I do like a really dark gray because I think even right now with the lights on, I think it looks really, really good. So that's the color that I went with. And so I'll just start with the, the back of the theater here. So the popcorn machine that I have is still the same. This is the uh, Paragon Theater Pop. I think four popcorn machine. This is the four ounce machine with the matching stand. And I do love that. The popcorn's awesome. And I did have this popcorn machine over here where this media stand was, but the light from the projector screen reflecting on the glass of the popcorn machine drove me crazy. Um, so I moved it back here to get it out of the way so that those reflections don't drive me nuts. And I was happy that there's still enough room to walk through to actually get in the theater. So that's still the same. The media storage is the same. My Amiibo is my Batman knickknacks, my U mic one, other remotes, controllers, you know, nothing that's changed. I'm a big physical media guy. It's kind of dying out, but I'm going to continue buying it for as long as I can. And so all those are still the same. Then these three seats that I bought, I got them from Amazon. I'll put the uh, exact model and stuff in the description of the video in case anybody's interested. So I like how sleek these are. They're, they're skinnier than the other seats that I was looking at, and they're on the cheaper end. I think they were like $180, $190 each. Um, I wasn't trying to spend 400 bucks a chair because the cheapest chairs that I found that actually have the cup holders in them were the Serta home theater chairs from Sam's Club. Now, those are really, really comfortable, and you know I would have gotten them if I had the space and money wasn't really an issue, but... I went with these. They're super, super comfortable. You can definitely sit down and watch a movie or a game. I said I got the Flyers game on. They're losing, so let's not look at that. But you can sit in these for hours and your butt doesn't hurt. I was extremely happy with how comfortable that they were. I was a little bit nervous because they were kind of on the cheaper side, but I do love them. And then to go with the seats, I wanted some kind of cup holder or table. And I was thrilled when I found these two skinny stands or end tables, I guess, that have cup holders in them. And again, I bought them. Um, I found them on Amazon and I just went to the company's website and I ordered them directly from there. They're, they're cheap, you know, they're like 30 bucks each. You know, you put them together. I think it's like, you know, typical MDF, you know. Don't use the screws it comes with. Go buy your own screws from Home Depot or Lowe's. It makes putting them together so much easier and they're so much more sturdy with the different screws. But I was thrilled that I found them. I think they look great with the three seats and I like how everybody who has a seat can have a cup holder. Uh, my Harmony, my Logitech Harmony Elite remote is still the same. I know Harmony is not making remotes anymore, but I'm not going to need a new one. 
unless I get, I buy a brand new house and I actually do my theater the way that I ultimately want it to, you know, from the ground up, I'll worry about getting a new remote, but the Harmony Elite is awesome. I really, really love it. And so I'll go over here to the, all the gear. So one thing I liked about the room here was it has this really deep windowsill here. It's like 20 some inches deep. And I was thrilled I was able to put my Sanus Systems rack in here. Because I love that the equipment is up out of the floor so it's not taking up floor space and it's out of the way of your eyes so you don't you don't see it. So I was thrilled that I was able to put it up here. And I just have room blackout curtains from Walmart in a, on a tension rod. There's some back right where the window starts. And then there's more on the front here. They're the same, you know, same blackout curtains. But during the day, the room is black. So that's exactly what I wanted, and the curtains do the job. So I, it's, it's awesome. All my gear hasn't changed. It's all the same. I have my Nintendo Switch. I have my Logitech Harmony Elite Hub. My Panasonic DMP BD210 Blu-ray player. My Xbox One X. And my Denon AVR3300 receiver. I love all the gear that I have. It still works. Runs great. Absolutely no issues. And the Denon's more than powerful enough to power my power of some of the audio speakers to ear splitting levels with zero distortion and couldn't ask for more. And I have the extender for the Harmony remote or the hub, whatever, one there inside. And I have one outside so that it talks to the projector. And so that's all the gear. And then the projector that I chose for this room, um, I couldn't keep the BenQ HT 2050. The uh, throw distance doesn't work, and I can't drill any holes in the ceiling here. So I had to get a different projector where the throw distance was appropriate. And I wanted to go with the bigger screen, and so this one fit the bill perfectly. This is the Epson Home Cinema uh, 2250, I believe. Again, I'll put the link in the description. This projector is awesome. The image quality is great. The only, the two main negatives about this projector, I'll call them 1A and 1AA, because they're just as important. There is no test pattern for this projector, which was insane to me. How do you not have a test pattern on the projector? Um, so you have to like go online to some site or whatever and actually bring up a test pattern. Um, that's really annoying to me. Um, I know you only use it once, but it's extremely crucial in setting up the projector. So that is really, really annoying. And that's a big negative for me. And the other one is how loud it is. I don't know if you can hear it. But this one is significantly louder than my BenQ HT 2050 that I had. The HT 2050 was actually closer to your head when you're sitting down. And it was quieter. And even, you know, in power saving mode or whatever you want to call it, they're both in eco mode. This one is just significantly louder. And I don't have the best hearing in the world, but if I notice that the fan is a lot louder than the BenQ, it's, it has to be louder, trust me. So I would highly recommend mounting this outside of your room if you can, or if it has to be inside the room, I highly recommend you build some kind of a hush box so that you don't hear the annoying fan noise. It's not super distracting, but in a really quiet movie, with nothing else going on, you can definitely hear it. You know, when an action scene's going, you have it cranked up, you can't tell, but those are the two negatives with this projector. Other than that, I think it's a great choice. I would still personally go with the BenQ HD 2050 if the throw distance worked out for me here, because that guy was able to get them for the same price. So I'd stick with the BenQ, unless you're gonna spend twice the amount of money, but I do love this projector for what it does and what you know the image it produces and for gaming it's still good so I'm happy that I found one that works. And then the actual mount for this is a qual gear mount. Again, I'll put the link in the description. I like you'll see the yellow knob, the other two knobs. You can make subtle adjustments to the projector. You just turn the knob a little bit and it'll turn the projector slightly this way like so you can really dial in the image which I love the other mount that I had did not do that. It was a cheaper one. Um, so I highly recommend this mount for any projector that you have. It's, it's great. And then, so my screen that I chose 
for this time. I want, I had a 92 inch screen, the same one that I had before, but I was doing some measurements and figured that I could do a bigger screen. So I went with the 100 inch instead. So this is the silver ticket, um, 16 by nine, 100 inch, and that's 100 inches diagonally. And I sit about 12, between 12 and 13 feet, I would say, away. And that's perfect, 100 inch screen, especially when it's a 16 by nine image and the whole screen's filled up. It looks great, I love it. And the speakers, they're all the same. I do have a complete five speaker system now. I was able to get the surrounds. So these are the power sound audio speakers. I have the MT210C center channel, and then I have two MT210 tower speakers. And then in the back for surround duty, I got these the other week. I have two of the PowerSound Audio MT110 surround speakers. And again, this mount was recommended to me from somebody on the PowerSound Audio Facebook group. So again, I'll put this link in the description. The speaker has four screws on the back of it already. So you just take those four screws out. You screw the back of this mount into the speaker. You mount, you just find a stud, mount it on there. It's awesome and you have a lot of flexibility you can pull this part out if you want to pull it out and then you can also swivel this arm here left and right and then you can swivel the speaker itself left and right so you do have a lot of flexibility if you know you have studs where you can where you want your surrounds to go i highly recommend these mounts they're built really well i have no issue that they're going to fall over because they're mounted into studs and they work great i couldn't be happier so I have one over there, and then I have one over here. Excuse the light from the projector. Wiring I wasn't too concerned with. It's whatever, lights are off, so it's all good. So those are the speakers. And then I kept my SVS PB4000 subwoofer. I love this thing. I know especially with the SVS price increases, this brand new right now is like $2,300. And sorry, SVS, I love you, but I would not pay $2,300 for a brand new PB4000. Find it used from somebody or wait till they have one of their sales in their outlet. It is a great subwoofer, not for that amount of money, though. Sorry. You can do a lot better. But I, this is awesome. I did the subwoofer crawl in here. This is where it sounds the best to me. I might play around with the uh, REW. I have my U mic over there. See if I can use the DSP to dial in a little bit better, but it's pretty near field, so it does sound pretty great. Um, you know, you crank it up, you got a good uh, action movie going. And so I do love that. And you'll see the wiring is pretty careless back here, but again, I rent, I rent the place. I'm not going to go crazy with hiding the wires and doing all that stuff inside the walls and whatever. So when the lights are off, nobody cares. That's kind of my mentality. When the lights are off, it looks awesome. So that's all that matters. And then the last thing that I did, I just, I added these uh, Arlex studio foam acoustic panels. So I had these in my drum room in my last house. And then I just reached out to them. I told them what I had, sent them the blueprints of the room. And this is the acoustic plan they gave me. This is where they suggested that I hang all this stuff. And so that's what I did. And it does sound good. I got to rerun the uh, auto calibration. I haven't done that yet, but it still sounds great even now. And I even have panels underneath the soffit here. And yeah, so that's uh, it's pretty much the new theater. I really love it. I'm really happy that I was able to, to do this so I can continue to enjoy having a theater. Um, oh, and the, uh, the center channel stand, I think I got questions about that before. These are just the uh, monitor stands that I bought from Amazon because this, you know, these center channels are no joke with these speakers. It's really big. And so I bought two pairs of those bookshelf monitors and just put them together. And then I have the Arlex Mopad XLs underneath it to angle it up more. And again, I'll put all the links in the description. It works great. This is a, I think the dialogue actually sounds better here than in my last theater because the center channel is more up out of the way. 
and it's not on the floor so I don't get any, you know, reverb or anything like that from voices coming off of the floor because the center channel is more elevated. So I do love that. It's pretty much facing directly at my ears right now when I'm sitting here. Oh, and again, real quick, the surround speakers, the tweeters are exactly the same as the front speakers, but these are the new, I think B and C is the brand woofer that Tom is now putting in these. So they have the new woofer, but the tweeters are exactly the same as the front. So I was happy about that. Um, and yeah, the plan for the future, I have a triple black velvet on order right now that I'm going to use to cover all that sound foam underneath the soffit to hopefully soak up the light reflection from the projector. And so if I like that, how it looks, I'm gonna order extra of that, and then I'm gonna just gonna put it over the doors. I didn't wanna to have to paint the doors and then repaint them. So I'll just cover them with the triple black velvet if I like how it performs underneath the soffit here. And so yeah, that's the, uh, that's the new theater that I have. Uh, so I appreciate if you listen to me ramble on this much i appreciate it um yeah all right youtube i'll see you later